Hello, good morning, and welcome to Big Issues on New Day. My name is Beatrice Edu, and today we're going to bring you what transpired in Parliament today. Because the House resumed from recess with a big issue on the heart of both the minority and the majority. With the majority leader, Alexander Apenio Markin, having already gone to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation of Article 97, and the minority, uh, the, the majority also accusing the minority of trying to declare itself majority in the House. We'll bring you all that transpired. But this was coming because a former minority leader, Harina Idrisu, had petitioned the Speaker to declare four seats vacant. And we'll be going into Parliament to bring you all that happened with the arguments and counter arguments. But let me bring you details of that petition Harina Idrisu sent to the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, and it says, I wish to notify you under Order 99 uh, of the Standing Orders of Parliament on the need for you to declare vacant the seats of the following constituencies, Agona West, Suhum, Amenfi Central and Fomina. I will be doing so under Order 18 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. Vacancy other than resignation of Article 97.1 B to C, G and H of the Constitution. 18. The Speaker shall inform the House of the recurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1 B to C, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution, duly submitted October 15, uh, 2024, which is exactly the day Parliament resumed from its recess, that's yesterday. So this is the petition that Harun Idrisu, the immediate past uh, minority leader of the House, sent to the Speaker of Parliament. So what transpired? Take a, uh, a look at what happened as the MPs exchanged words. Honourable members, I have listened to the comments from members after the minority leader submitted before the House a statement under Order 93. Both the statement and the comments have raised quite serious issues of procedure and substantive law. And I think I need time to go through them. Because what I believe is that do unto others as you want others to do unto you. And when you plant evil, you reap evil. And so I want to take a few days to submit a reasoned ruling in this matter. I see that this is not only an urgent matter, but a very serious national issue. And there's good reason why the constitutions after the 1960 constitution. So please, having gone through all these constitutions and having gone through all these parliaments in the, in the Fourth Republic and having experienced all what you have stated, I think I'll have to do justice to the subject. And so I need to present to you a very well thought out ruling so that tomorrow I will not either be crucified or hailed, but the right thing would have been done. 
And you just watched there the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana Bagbin, uh, saying that he's going to think about this matter because it's quite serious, which would have serious ramifications also for the country. And I'm coming to my panel here. I do have with me Studio Sampiyale, he's president of the NDC Professional Forum. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us on Big Issues on New Day. Good morning, madam. Mm. I'm wonderful. Thank you for asking. Uh, we'll also be having with us Inoka Fuakwa. He's private legal practitioner, member of the uh, communications team of the governing MPP, as well as Michael Safu Kantanka, who is national communications team member, uh, Movement for Change. They'll be joining us very shortly. But Sampiale, you're here right on time, so let me start with you. Uh, I don't know whether you had the opportunity to watch what transpired in Parliament. As you know, there were arguments, majority leader to uh, Mahama Yariga to the MP for, for Ebuaka South, Atachia, and essentially uh, accusing the NDC of wanting to use the Speaker to become majority in Parliament instead of going through the processes uh, through this petition from Harun Idrisu. Why do you want to, uh, as it were, or seeking to overturn the majority in Parliament in, in the words of, of Atachia? Good morning, NDB. Thank you very much for the invitation. But before I address this question, I want to talk about two public safety issues. One is the total lack of street lights in Accra. Everywhere you drive in Accra is in total darkness. This is irrespective of the fact that on each pressure of electricity you consume, there's a street light uh, aspect of that. For how long can the state supply these funds and subject the citizens to danger? Have you found out from authorities why we don't have them? I did not do that. For me, as a citizen, I pay for that service. All right? And I should not be in the position of going around state institutions asking why they are not performing. What is important for me is to raise the matter uh, on a platform like that for those who are supposed to be responsible to do what is right. Because we are not just talking about anything, we are talking about people's lives. The second issue is that if you drive on our overheads, overhead bridges, you find that they are in between the bridges, the uh, spaces, there's supposed to be some iron bars uh, in between them for expansion. If you drive on the Achimota, no, no, uh, the mm -hmm. Malam Junction High one, and also the Ligon IPS one, all these st uh, street railings have been stolen or taken off, making driving very, very dangerous. I'm glad you talked about the fact that they've been stolen because we've been doing campaign as well on street lights. Uh, across the country and the fact that they are not functioning. So don't you think that beyond the responsibility on the part of the government, perhaps there's a need for education to let people know that this is for all of us. So don't go steal them. Well, then there's, it's not me. It's the Center for Civic Education. You know, mine as a citizen who pays my bills regularly, pay my road wetness, it's, it's my duty to enjoy the services, pay for them and use it. All right. So those who are responsible for street lighting, please take the responsibility because we can no longer tolerate your criminal negligence. Criminal that, negligence, you yes, say. That, may cost, that has caused the life of many people. Now, if you're on the overhead and you are driving and you see this portal, the propensity is for you to break. What about the guy behind you? He's just going to knock your car. And all you're doing is to tow your car away. But the people who have caused that negligence Nobody's talking about them, and it's not depressed for a country like that. Now, to be yesterday, something interesting happened, and in this country, I don't know what has never happened before. <laughs> Every day that has happened now has happened before. Mm -hmm. We saw on the floor of Parliament a very lively discussion, uh, exposition of law, and sometimes some pedestrian comments on the matter that has been dealt with, with in Parliament before. 2020. Yes. What are the facts of this case? After the registration exercised by the EC, 
it was found out that one member of the NDC from a Memphis Central had gone to register for becoming an independent candidate. You mean a Memphis West? A Memphis Central. Mm. That's my friend, uh, Honorable Kweku Aka. Then on the MPP side, there were three more, so making them four. So when this happens, what happens? So the Honorable Haruna Idrisu drew the attention of the speaker about these possible vacancies and draw on the previous president when one member of parliament who eventually became the second deputy speaker who's also in the same controversy and Esiama. now he came in as npp went out and came back as an independent candidate and now he's coming back as an npp mm -hmm. candidate interesting this being the facts what we normally do as lawyers is to apply the facts to the law and in this matter the presence of the law is the article 97 of the constitution which i believe that mm -hmm. your viewers and everybody has it very well but for purposes of education i mean i mean to read if you so permit it says mm -hmm. a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament if he leaves the party of which he has he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain that's emphasis here seeks to remain in parliament as an independent candidate independent member or if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party these are the this the presence of the law that governs this situation now in applying this you want to resort to the standing orders of the parliament to give you guidance as what to, to be done and so honorable arna Idrisu referred to article uh, clause 54 99 of the standing orders but indeed drawing from article 99 g and h as i have read mm -hmm. now the classical question to ask is whether this is a question of interpretation of the constitution itself or interpretation of the standing orders what do you think it is both you why see, in article uh, plus 99 it says in their standing orders so the interpretation ought to be done by the speaker and if the speaker makes a determination and it is not acceptable by any party then he can go to supreme court for interpretation of the constitution. but our, our laws make 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 that make it clear that the interpretation of our constitution or our legal provisions are done by the supreme or is done by the supreme court i just said that mm. there are two documents we are dealing with one is the standing orders of the parliament which governs all activities in parliament and then there's the supreme law which is the constitution so the process is this where the, there is an interpretation problem in parliament in, re, in respect of the standing orders which is provided for under article 99 of the uh, standing orders of parliament it is the speaker who interprets it so in the case of a siama versus the mpp it was a uh, speaker a uh, uh, new uh, what's his name michael Quay. michael Quay, who interpreted that the mpp had written this man has crossed carpet for mm. leaving the MPP and going as an independent candidate. And his ruling was that for that reason, he has ceased to become a member of parliament. Now, the argument of the majority leader who has gone to the Supreme Court asking for interpretation is what is in the Constitution itself, Article 97. And you read a bit of that to us just uh, before you started your, your commentary. I, I, I am saying that parliament is a closed book. They are the masters of their own rules okay so there must be a determination before anybody can trigger article 97 uh, 97 of the constitution mm. we don't rule parliament with the constitution per se we rule parliament with the standing orders and that's what the speaker is seeking to do by going through the precedence set in parliament look at other 
laws. And I know Speaker Babin is well, well, well read. And I'm sure he's also going to do consultation with other speakers because he's the chairman of the parliamentary committee or the, uh, whatever, uh, Commonwealth. Mm. I'm sure he's going to do a lot of consultation to come out with this. Ordinarily, it ought to be, have been that, oh no, Speaker Okwe had given a ruling on this matter. Mm. And therefore, we are going by the president. Just as in court, we go by president. Now, you depart from a president not because you want to depart. You depart from a president because you have certain legal reasons to depart from a president. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now, let us look at the arguments of the lawyers. I, was, I love listening to somebody like Joe Gatti, mm -hmm. expressing law. I love listening to uh, uh, Mama Yarida and also um, Dada Ayene. They were talking law. The others were just talking political law. My friend Atacha, he was just talking political law. That if you want to be a majority leader, go to the polls. December 7. December 7. Being so naive of the fact that the constitutional representation gazetted for Ghana's parliament is that the NDC has 137. And then PP has 137. Plus, Esiama making a You see, if you make that argument, then Esiama's position also becomes more controversial. But uh, I, I will let you continue with your thoughts. But you just mentioned Jugugate, and he emphasized on the same bit you read they remain, seek to remain. And he said that these individuals who say that they want to be independent, they are not saying they are leaving the MPP now. They are only looking into if the future. Allowed, How do you if interpret I, if, I, if you allowed me to make my argument, mm. you would have come to the conclusion and agreed with me that on one issue, two different lawyers may have different interpretations. And dwelling on their experience, their exposure, and their research capabilities, they are able to draw the law from various angles to make their case. And you would have understood that. I said, I love listening to Joe Gatti because he was speaking a lot of law. But the genesis of this matter is that the people of Ghana give us a, a what equal number of members of parliament. And for me, I still have problems. Why the NDC allowed the MPP to assume that they were the majority in power in, in parliament? Because... Asiama deciding that in I would deal with NPP, I would uh, with MPP, they should have then asked the question: Was it on permanent basis or on case by case basis? Because immediately he decided that he's going to join MPP, and for which his number has been added to the number of NPP to make it the majority. Then he has effectively moved to join the MPP. Then, but we slept on our right, and that has created a problem. I follow what I'm saying. I the, am listening. The gazetted result of this country are 137, 137. The plus one ought to have been independent to be able to float with the NDC when the NDC made a point which he under which he likes, mm -hmm. or to float with the MPP when the, NDP, uh, uh, the he, MPP was making a point he liked. But in this case, Esiama, this same Esiama, had moved permanently. You know, when he moves from the speaker's seat, he doesn't sit on an independence. He just go to join the MPP. So effectively, he should have been tagged for being a member of the MPP and had crawled carpet. But the, I'm saying that the NDC uh, slept on its right. Now, three members of the MPP, flowing from the president said by Mike Okwe, by his ex, uh, um, you know, uh, right honorable Mike Okwe, mm -hmm. is clearly stating that for, from what we learned of Mike Okwe's ruling, these people, including that of the NDC, have vacated their post and they should therefore be a by election. Now, the time left, we cannot do a by election. And but, that was the argument of the majority leader. As yes, well. but, but the time left does not stop a changeover of the season arrangement or the rule of the rules. Because if a CMA situation took him out of parliament, and then he went for a by-election to come back as an independent candidate. Changing the rules does not mean that the minority want to use the speaker 
to take over the majority. So if that's not the case, why are you seeking for it now? We are seeking for it because it's a matter of law and it's a matter of falling for a president. I, I don't think you are following me. I'm following you yes. very well. Quite recently, at the beginning of this parliament, the, a, a, a situation arose in which a speaker, in his right as the speaker, ruled that what has constituted a vacation of seat has been occasioned by a CMS decision to go and contest as an independent candidate, and the MPP had written against that. We are also saying that our Memphis Central Member of Parliament, having gone to file as an independent candidate, ceases to be our candidate and to remain in Parliament as, a, as, a, as a, our candidate. That's the, these are the issues, right? I think that uh, Afenio Markin's uh, injunction or application is too premature because he seeks to, by this, bring in the Supreme Court that any time he doesn't understand anything, any issue in Parliament, you know, he has to go to the Supreme Court. But that is not the procedure. The Parliament has got its own processes of resolving their matters. And I love the speaker when he said, if you plant evil, you reap evil. So what you're trying to say is that the MPP is not applying the principle of what is good for the goose is good for the gander. Certainly. Certainly. You know, I do not see, I don't understand why the MPP would cry uh, in the morning and weep in the evening and in the afternoon laugh. You understand? The same situation, you wrote to the Speaker of Parliament for Esiama to be moved out. And this same situation has arisen, and you don't want the same law or the same consequences to apply to you. I want you to hold on. We'll come back to how you take uh, the stance of the speaker as we speak, because mm. he said he's going to think about it. And you've just praised the speaker here uh, and, uh, and assume that he's going to consult other speakers just so he's able to come out with the best decision moving forward. But I just want us to watch uh, Justice Abdullahi. He's a private legal practitioner, and he's been sharing his thoughts on what transpired in Parliament and this very issue. Understanding of the events that unfolded today is that um, on the basis of a um, of a writ allegedly filed by the the majority leader um, seeking to, as it were, injunct Parliament from proceeding with the hearing of the application or what, or the motion to remove the four members of Parliament or the petition to remove the former members of parliament should be put on hold, more or less. I I think um, for most um, constitutional law students, um, this would clearly be a complete surprise if the speaker actually um, holds onto his horses um, simply on the basis of the writ or that has been filed at the Supreme Court. Um, and I think, once again, that is Constitutional Law 101 would tell you that um, the courts have no business in Parliament. The courts, um, um, parliamentary business, uh, closed door and closed books, as we call it, and to, to, the, to the courts. And so... Um, I at this moment, I mean, it's difficult to comment on the whatever rate has been filed, and and also project into what may possibly come up. But um, without any shred of imagination or doubt, um, I do not think that um, it would go far um, based on the time-tested, acceptable principles of constitutional law regarding these areas. Um, of course, we can understand that there is politics into these. I mean, there is politics, and then there, there is the the law aspects of it. But I, I do not foresee the possibility of the speaker um, simply throwing in the towel and saying that he would want to wait for the Supreme Court to make a determination of whatever has been brought before it. I, I don't foresee that happening. I see the speaker simply um, ignoring or, or throwing away the 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 um the intervention of the majority and proceeding to hear the motion 
um, as to whether the motion would go in favor, the motion itself would be um, uh, decided in favor of the majority or the minority. Uh, it's a different issue that completely cannot be um, 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 influenced by uh, this intervention that has been made by the by the majority leader. And he just watched there at Justice Abdullah. He's a private legal practitioner, given his own interpretation and, as it were, prediction of what he thinks the speaker will do. He thinks the speaker will throw away the argument of the majority. But at the end of the day, he doesn't know uh, whether the motion would favor the NDC or the NPP, currently the majority group in Parliament. I've been joined by my other panel members, uh, Enoch Afuakwa, private legal practitioner, member of the National Communications Team for the Governing NPP. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us on Big Issues. On Good morning, my dear. I've also been joined by Michael Safu Kantanka, National Communications Team member, Movement for Change. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dave. Good let, to be here. Yes, let me, let me get your thoughts, uh, Enoch, there, because when you entered, you were actually talking about Sapiali. You, you used the word, I haven't the time to talk, so just let me get your preliminary comment, really, on what transpired in Parliament. And you heard Sampiali earlier on your way here, uh, how he has interpreted the situation so far. Let me say a very good morning to yourself and extend the greetings of His Excellency, the Vice President, who is also the leader and president in waiting of the Republic of Ghana, Alaji like Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, to the good people of Ghana through your major platform. Um, on this subject of uh, the minority moving a motion to, as it were, cause uh, the declaration of some seats in Parliament vacant. I believe it's politics and politics as usual. The framers of the Constitution were clear in their mind. And everyone notes that the life of Parliament, every Parliament, is unique on itself. That is why Parliament in itself is numbered. We had the first Parliament or the Fourth Republic Second Parliament, Third Parliament, Fourth Parliament, Fifth Parliament, Sixth Parliament, Seventh Parliament, and currently we are in the Eighth Parliament. So, at the end of the life of every Parliament, the Parliament is dissolved. Members are paid their end of service benefits, i.e., called the Es Gracia. Then a new Parliament sworn in. So, the life of this Eighth Parliament will completely extinguish on the 9th of 6 January, 2025. Then at about 11.30, thereof, 12 a.m., the new parliament, that is the ninth parliament, will be sworn into office. The reason I believe the framers of the constitution, the draftsman, put in the constitution of our republic and article 97, 1, G, and H, it's similarly to preserve the sanctity of parliament and to preserve the intentions or the will of the sovereign people of Ghana who have voted in a particular way for, for members of parliament to do the business of this republic in accordance with law. Parliament, the, the, the draft men envisage that there might be cross carpeting in the life of a particular parliament. So in as much as you were voted, let's say Enoch Afuaka was voted on the ticket of a new patriotic party to represent a particular, a specific constituency in the House of Parliament. And I enter Parliament and see that, oh, I can do business with the NDC. Probably they are giving me some juicy offer. Probably they are offering me a ministerial appointment or something in lieu of joining them. Then I, I can completely abandon my political party that sponsored my ticket to the Parliament of Ghana and join the, the, the other political divide because of my personal interest. So in that light, then you are deemed to have vacated your seat or you are deemed to have cross carpet which will occasion the the the, the sort of uh, procedure that has been enshrined under article 97 1 g and h i have heard at the citing the president or the ruling by right honorable Aaron Michael Quay. And that's the argument people are making, that the MPP is being hypocritical. I mean, the president has, uh, president has been said before, why are you rushing to the Supreme Court? Yes, we are going to court because Article 97, 1, G and H is not clear. It is not clear. Because you have heard rival interpretations being ascribed to that provision of the Constitution. So when Professor Michael Okwe interpreted it in November 2020, it wasn't clear? He did not interpret it. That was no interpretation because as far as interpretation of the Constitution is concerned, that is the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 131A. And no other court, apart from the Supreme Court, 
is clothed with that jurisdiction to interpret the portion of the constitution. And you see, previously, the, the, there was a decision of the Supreme Court in the, we call it the Mechanical Principle, where the Supreme Court ruled that when the provision of the constitution is clear, the courts are enjoined to enforce it. But this same position was changed in the ex parte Zaneto case, where the Supreme Court, speaking through Justice uh, Atuguba JS, as he, he then was, openly stated that um, the learned justice, Akabuafu then, he's now a judge of appeal, who sat at the high court to rule on the Zaneto case, that Zaneto, per Article 94 of the Constitution, because Zaneto was not a registered voter in the Kolekulote constituency, he, she had not satisfied the conditions or the requirements under Article 94. So she was not qualified to be elected parliamentary candidate for the National Democratic Congress because the provision was clear. So Judge Asuku was speaking for the Supreme Court, stated that the mere fact that Justice Akabwafu, the, the trial court judge, has stated that the provision is clear, has undertaken an, uh, what we call interpretation of the Constitution, which the, the, the High Court has no jurisdiction to, to do. When the matter went to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court used the modern purposive approach to interpret that provision differently stating that the electoral cycle goes, uh, goes with limited registration in that kind of regard, and political parties prepare themselves in lieu of the major elections until they have filed with the electoral commission. So that opened the floodgate where even people who are not registered within some constituencies. I remember when we were going to Kumau, our parliamentary candidate was not a registered voter in the constituency, but because he was a registered voter in a particular constituency, he was qualified per the decision of the Supreme Court under that dispensation. So clearly, nobody can say Article 97 is clear because once the life of parliament is four years and no, none, of these four, uh, none of these four persons have served notice their caucus in which they belong in parliament that they have, that they have severed their ties with that caucus. None of these persons have served notice to the parties they belong, if they have, that they have severe ties with the parties the they belong. from the registration of the EC is indicating or these documents are indicating that they want to run as independent. So... The future intention of somebody that I want to be an independent member of parliament in the ninth parliament, if I am successful, can occasion the declaration of my seat vacant in the eighth parliament. Would that be possible? Are you thinking about that? Let me my intention, my intention of serving as an independent member of parliament for a particular constituency in the ninth parliament, future intention, occasion the declaration of my seat in the eighth parliament, which is unique. Of which I have not severe tights. SMS own wasn't. SMS own is unique. Let's go into the SMS saga. SMS own, the new patriotic party dismissed Honorable Siama for going independent and wrote on the 13th of October to the Speaker of Parliament that SMS, Honorable Siama was not a member of the new patriotic party again. So in the life of that parliament, Honorable Siama was expunged as a member of the new patriotic party. And as such, that provision, you can say, I believe it was an ultra virus ruling of the of, of, of right honorable speaker. But honorable Esiama could have gone to the high court to enforce his right as, as of right because it is his right that was infringed upon. I, but he decided to go uh, through the, the necessary contest and he won back his seat. Uh, let me ask you this question and I'll go to Michael, who is representing Movement mm -hmm. for Change. Are you not making the argument of those who think that the MPP is refusing to recognize the saying that you benefited from in November, that what is good for the goose is good for the gander? You're refusing to accept that because this time around it's not working for you. It is not. We are a country governed by rules and regulations. Democracy prevails where there's rule of law. And in our, in, in, in our country, it is the constitution of Ghana that is supreme. And in terms of the supremacy of the constitution, all arms of government have their responsibility under the constitution of the republic. And it is clearly in the domain of the Supreme Court to interpret and enforce a provision of the constitution. So as far as the interpretation and enforcement of the constitution of the Republic of Ghana is concerned, that is clearly the exclusive original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. So if we are, we are ascribing rival interpretations to a provision of the constitution, then it, 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 is, it is ripe for us to take it to the, to the forum where conclusive interpretations or conclusive settlements could be given to that provision so that we can all follow the pathway that the Supreme Court will give us. So I will, I will clearly congratulate and applaud Honorable Afenio Markens for taking a bold step to go before the law lords to be able to imp, uh, int uh, interpret the, this provision of the Constitution to bring finality as far as the provision and Article 97 one G and H is concerned. I'm coming to you shortly, Michael, but I, I, I just got reminded again about what you said, that sure. there is a need to preserve the sanctity of Parliament. Absolutely. You heard what the Speaker said. 
Apenyo Marking is rushing to the Supreme Court because he thinks that there ought to be an interpretation of Article 97. Sure. And the argument of critics is that you're unnecessarily setting traps ahead of you because what do you think you're doing now that could disadvantage uh, the minority, could disadvantage you in the future when you become the minority? In the past, the Supreme Court ruled that Parliament are masters of their own rules and that the business of Parliament is a closed book. But in the Justice Agulai versus Attorney General recently, the Supreme Court departed from that position and stated that Parliament are masters of their own rules, subject to the Constitution of the Republic. So as far as Parliament is concerned, Parliament is not supreme. Parliament is subject to the Constitution of the Republic. And any act or actions that the Parliament of Ghana undertake, which is inconsistent with the Constitution of the Republic, the Supreme Court can render that null and void of no effect. And certainly, once he's going to court, I believe that is, the, that, that, that is the right thing to do. And as citizens that we are developing our jurisprudence and our democracy, we must applaud Honorable Apenyo Markings in that regard. That is the right thing to do, and we must applaud Honorable Apenyo Markings. Those are your words. I'm coming to you, Michael. You've had the opportunity to listen to Sampiali yes. and listen to the representative from the MPP. Where do you stand? Thank you. It's interesting when I listen to the argument the MPP makes. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how the great elephant has fallen. It's, it's sad. Um, they are involved in so much mischief now, so to keep the majority position. They are trying to re-engineer things. You know, I mean, he says he's going to seek interpretation. Fair enough, that's within his rights. And we, we hope to learn a lot from that. But why are we here? We are here because of the toxic nature of the uh, winner-takes-all regime we practice. So MPP must, of necessity, strive anything possible to keep their majority because then they can take decisions however they want. NDC is also striving to now become majority because of the same winner takes all. And I believe Ghanaians here have a very classical reason to choose Alan Chermatin to come and unite us. We've come to a point in our development that we've seen that for 32 years, this toxic divide between the duopoly and the correspondent mischief has not inured to our benefit. So it's important we are able to read into these things and find reason enough to bring someone who can bring us together, tap into all expertise from all angles and build a country. Now, I'll go into the rules a bit. The, the Constitution is very clear. And really, rules are enacted. These laws are enacted to keep everybody in check to attain some form of sanity, to be able to deal with the mischief of the day, where people, as and when it favors them, then they sway towards a certain angle. Parliament must be kept in a certain um, sanctity, I should say. And that's why even before you begin to work as an MP, you are supposed to declare who you are supposed to, who you're going to do business with as an independent person. And that works for every other party, every other member of parliament. So you realize um, the second deputy speaker, when he came, he had to declare that even though he was elected as an independent candidate, he wants to do business with the MPP. He has declared it from the onset. It is not for not these regulations are there. It is for very um, clear reasons. And the constitution says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. A member of a certain a working parliament, an active parliament, shall vacate their seat. And then they give the reasons why you will vacate your seat. Now, one is, if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent um, member. This cross carpeting creates a bit of chaos in parliament. It creates um, inconsistencies. It creates mistrust. It distorts the process of parliament, the, the form of parliament. And so it's important we're able to keep everybody in check and consistent with the rules. 
And that's why you cannot get up today and say, I'm MPP. The next day you say, oh, I've crossed to NDC. When actually from the onset, you are registered in the books of parliament as a member of MPP or NDC. It's not allowed. Can you imagine a typical example is the Suhum MP um, in uh, as a stance now he's going for independent campaigning against someone like Protozoa who is the MPP's candidate. Can you, can you imagine the, the chaos, the mistrust and the, the um, distortion to the way um, the party uh, does its things. It's, it's, not, it's unacceptable, and that's why it's important we uphold the Constitution, which says that once you switch, you, you, you lose your seat. You, you can't remain a member when the reason why you are a member, you, you've lost it. You so said, what you're saying is that what mm, uh, uh, Michael Quay enforced in 2020, yeah. November 2020, should be enforced That's the right thing. Around. That's the right thing. I mean, thankfully, he's a professor of the law and he set the precedence. I, I don't know why Honorable Afenio Makin wants to introduce another arm of government to come and interfere in the affairs of, but it speaks to the mischief and the crude resolve to hold on to majority seats by all means, by all means. And I even heard of an interlocutory injunction. It, it's not necessary. You see, it's not necessary. Allow the laws to work. You, you are um, learned people. You are masters of the law. And if you are going to be playing mischief around the law like this, it's it's funny. It's it's it doesn't it doesn't augur well for our democracy. Really. Uh, I mean, I I, I I I heard you say that mm. over the last thirty two years, both NDC and MPP have played yeah. mischief with us. Is yeah. is it your understanding that uh, these two political parties mm. are gradually, quote unquote, destroying the uniqueness of our separation of powers as enshrined in our legal provisions? Essentially, that's what is happening. That's a consequence of the. Toxic divide, you know, when there's a lot of business that happens in Parliament and and that's why it's important for them to by all means hold on to a majority position so that they get to determine the course of all these businesses. And so it's about time we we, we set aside this duopoly because in in executing whatever mandate they have in the current form as a winner takes all, MPP wins, and they get to determine everything. It's not helping us. It's, MPP may be doing the right thing, NDC will be against it. NDC may be doing the right thing, MPP will be against it. So clearly, you can see it has, the degeneration has gotten to the point, it's now affecting the constitution, the, the mother law of the country. Because they are interpreting, they are interpreting it, to it to favor them. Which, which, I mean, the first time we ever had this um, law operationalized was an MPP regime. When everybody was upset with the independent candidate, I don't know why I've forgotten his name. Esiama. Honorable Esiama. Everybody was against him. The president, Chairman Woon, to me, the whole party apparatus was against him. And so the Michael Quay, who was an MPP um, um, speaker, declared and enforced this law, the same law we are called to enforce today. And it's funny when they turn around just because it doesn't favor them to give them minority in parliament to turn around and say, hey, we are going to seek interlocutory injunction. We are going to court. It's not necessary. There's so, so much mischief around the MPP. And it makes me sad for Ghana. And that's why... I believe, with all my heart, it's about time we set aside this scheme, this uh, mode of governance. The toxic divide is too much. Let's be one and develop this country towards a common agenda and national development plan. I will come back to you, but let me get a quick re uh, response from uh, Sam Piali, and I will come to you as well, uh, uh, Afuakwa, because... Movement for Change has directly accused you as well. <laughs> Michael is essentially saying that you shouldn't paint the NDC as being saints because you've been part of the 32 years of Ghana's governance of interpreting the constitution based on your, on your own satisfaction and interest, really. Who hasn't been part in managing this country? Who hasn't been part? We have all been part. Whether as journalists, as politicians or whatever, we have all been part. Right. Now, in 
criminal jurisprudence, there is liability for every person's actions in the crime, right? So you're admitting indirectly? Wait, wait a minute. Auntie B, listen, <laughs> we're educating our members, so if you allow my thoughts to flow, maybe you understand where I'm coming from. Now, he rightly said that for the past, this is not the first time NDC and MPP have been in government. Mm -hmm. In America and other places, this duopoly works, right? But if you have a certain government that seeks to destroy everything, it can be NDC or MPP at a particular point in time, you don't reverse and say that it's the duopoly that is causing the problem, right? If Ghanaians wanted to have a union government, we could have had it a long time ago. But as long as we have taken the part of democracy, multi-party democracy, if you are strong enough as a political party, you organize to win power. That's the essence of democracy. I mean, elections in this kind of political party in this one. I heard my junior counsel saying that the life of every political uh, parliament is distant. Yes, it is. But the, the changes in parliament sessions that does not per se abolish their standing orders when they come they either improve it or collectively change whatever they want to change you understand so what is good what was good around my kokoe cannot be changed merely because the parliament has changed and as lawyers we all understand that when there's a, a, a existing decision, the decision is uh, uh, certain, unless a new law is made out of parliament itself or by interpretation of the Supreme Court, that law is standing and it is binding. All right? That is what I was saying that a fair marking's rate is premature because parliament has not taken the decision which is inimical to anybody's interest for which the Supreme Court is being called upon to interpret. The fact that the NPP says that Michael Quay's decision was intravirus. When the decision is intravirus, what do you do? You go to court to challenge it. Because it favored you, you kept the intravirus nature of the law. And it, that's what is haunting all of us. All right? I've also heard him that saying that uh, provisions of Article 91 are not clear. Is it because you say it's not clear? You don't do that. If you say the provisions are not clear, you file a rate like under, under Article 2 of the Constitution that anybody who is not satisfied with any, any provision will go to court. All right? Now, are you going to court for interpretation or you are going to court for injunction and injunction? You see, the Supreme Court is not there for just uh, interfering in the work of statutory bodies and seeking to oversight parliament the supreme court doesn't do that the supreme court for example will say oh the law you have passed is against the human rights of this class of people and therefore it's null and void mm. that's what the supreme court does or the way you have interpreted the constitution is not how it should be and coming to this conclusion they would have looked at all that many many issues and come to the conclusion that if we put this this the decision this way, it will be good for the country. Let me get clarity from what you said briefly, and I'll go to I'll go to uh, Enoch. You said that it is not the duopoly that is causing our problem. What is causing our problem? What is causing the pro problem now? It is the insensitivity, ah, uh, the greed, the misapplication of the we now we now well, take all. It's a misapplication of it. Because we have had government before under the, the same duopoly. All right? It is because of the fact I'm a lawyer and I don't want to talk about the court. But I know as a chief that if I have a nephew in my village who is always fighting because his uncle is the chief, then there's a problem. Let me come to you very briefly, uh, Enoch. Uh, you just heard some Piali there saying that because it favored you, the, the, the mm -hmm. ruling, as it were, or the enforcement of parliamentary orders uh, as done by then Speaker Michael Okwe, that you're now describing as ultra virus, you didn't challenge it because it favored you. How do you respond to that? Yeah, I respond to that clearly on the basis of Article 2.1 of our Constitution, <clears throat> that any citizen who alleges that, let me, let me read to the hearing of your, your, your viewers, that under Article 2.1 of our Constitution, 
to a person who alleges that an enactment or anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment or any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. So when 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 Honorable Right Honorable Speaker Michael Quay made the ruling declaring the, uh, the Formina constituency parliamentary seats vacant, any person, including the minority in parliament then, Honorable Harun Naidusu was the minor minority leader then, they could have also gone to the Supreme Court to, uh, to as it were, to invoke the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret that provision of the Constitution. It is better late than never. The reason I'm saying, and I still say, and continue to say, the provision of and Article 97 1G is not clear, is that, let me read it for the purpose of our viewers. Article 97 1A, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. G, if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament, to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member on our caucus on our side as a majority group none of our members have served notice to the leadership of the caucus that they want to remain in parliament as independent members none of our members in parliament have served notice to the party including the caucus leadership that they want to join a different political divide so as far as the satisfaction of this provision is concerned we have not gotten there two h say if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party no independent uh, member of parliament in the age parliament has joined a political party what you in, you are interpreting to say is that the intention of honorable esiama to join the ninth parliament if successful on the ticket of the new patriotic party cannot be interpreted retrospectively to mean that the current age parliament is what we are talking about. That is why I am saying, and I continue to maintain, that the provision under Article 97 is not clear. And the good thing is that I was uh, about preparing to go to court until I heard Honorable Afenio Martin has gone to court to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to interpret this provision of a constitution. So nobody in this republic should say that the provision under Article 97 is clear because the Supreme Court in Jasa Bulaj versus Attorney General has stated that uh, uh, the Supreme Court in um, uh, S. Partisanetto, the Republic of High Court Accra, S. Partisanetto, through Jasa Tuguba, said that insofar as rival interpretations are ascribed to a provision of the Constitution, the forum is the Supreme Court, and no court should say that the provision is clear. So we have far departed from the mechanical principle which gave uh, uh, um, some authority to the court or to other administrative bodies to implement or enforce provisions of the constitution when they feel that those provisions are clear. It's not clear. In our four courses, we are just wrapping up on this conversation. I'm just getting your final thought, if you yeah. uh, could say that in about 40 seconds. Right. We've heard the speaker say that he's going to think about it. Mm. What do you make of the stance of the speaker and what you expect of him? If you can do that in about 40 seconds, I'll give the same opportunity to both of you, and then we'll move on to our last topic. Well, I think the speaker has a very simple task to enforce what is already stated in law, and that's what he's going to do. The people have vacated their seats just by making those changes. It's, it's straightforward. It, it to you. <laughs> because the truth of the matter <laughs> is now, me. you see, you, I heard him say that it is for the next parliament, but the exercise of that decision they take today assets against the next parliament affects everything happening now within this parliament. <laughs> you can't take that off the, the question. And that's why it's important they vacate their seats and then we declare the seats empty and then... Sam uh, what are your expectations of the speaker? Uh, you see, if you take somebody's wife and degrade her to the heavens, it's still not your wife. What I intend to say is that the majority which these MPP people are claiming to is not theirs. On, on, their, on, on record, let me repeat, on record and in the Gazette, the MPP has 137, the NDC has 137. It's a majority group. Wait a minute, <laughs> Mr. Fokwa. <laughs> Mr. Fokwa. It's a majority group. Please allow him to make his point. <laughs> majority group of what? The majority group in parliament. Of what? We have not said the MPP majority. You say majority group in parliament. Please allow uh, Sam Pialis so, to make his point. So, dressing somebody's wife 
to a wedding that didn't make him your wife. You know, we have uh, lived in a country where today something is right because it suits us. The next day it's wrong because it doesn't suit us. And sometimes I miss Chibin Sabunso. Sometimes I do. I do. Why? I have my own reasons. You don't want to share on national television? The issue is this. By our own constitutions, party constitutions, immediately you declare yourself as an independent candidate, it means that you have set yourself up against the party. Because the party has a, a, a candidate also. Yeah. It's in the MPP, it's in the NDC. You, you understand? So, well, but you have our rules are different. You have it. Why, why is Alan no longer our rules? Are your rules, uh, Mr. <laughs> Fuaka, I put it to you <laughs> that your rules include the fact that if you set up yourself as an independent candidate, mm -hmm. you become as you forfeit your membership. membership. It is in your rules. And it takes two years for you to join. Is that not true? But Honorable Osiyama, who has filed, when did you join the party back as an independent candidate? What I'm so saying, I'm you, what I'm saying, rules are different. What, no, 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 Mr. Fuaka. <laughs> I'm your senior. What I'm talking, don't interrupt me. Yes, so respectfully so, senior. <laughs> in the NDC constitution, when you set up yourself against the elected party executive, a member of parliament, a parliamentary candidate, yeah. then you have set yourself as an independent party, fighting the interests of the party, and automatically you seem to be a member. That is it in the party, and is it every political party wants discipline and order. Otherwise, if you go to primaries and you lose, then you set up a rival group and that will not aga well for democracy. I think, as I sit here, that it is double standard on the part of the MPP to claim that Mike Okwe's decision was extra virus. It is wrong for the NPP to try to reap something different than what they have sown. And to rise to uh, Supreme Court, what we are dealing with is not uh, civil jurisdiction, civil matters, okay? We are dealing with two separate arms of government, governed by separate rules. And that, you know that, the Fokker, if even in a football club, you fail to exhaust the internal mechanisms, the court will not look favorably to your, your, your plea. Most of the time, they will ask you to go back to the internal uh, the mechanism, the mechanism for democracy in your in resolution. Now, what we are dealing here with is here that Parliament is the master of its own rules, as you lucidly said. Parliament is Parliament is ruled by its standing orders. So far, so far, so far, Parliament has not even taken any decision. Please on your thoughts. A motion moved in Parliament is not a decision of Parliament. Mm. Ordinarily, this motion will be discussed. And if the Speaker finds merit, it may even refer you to a subject matter committee. I know you praised the Speaker, yes, and that I, was... I am not praising the Speaker. No, no, uh, no. I mean, you, you talked about the Speaker being learned and the fact that you believe... Because I know, I have known Alvin Babin all his life. I was a member of the Consultative Assembly, and I still read the rationale for certain decisions that we took. So if uh, you can land on your So I am landing on the fact that my Okwe's decision can only be challenged in court for the court to determine that it is a virus. Until then, it's a standing precedent. Mm. And then people should not be allowed to reprobate and approbate. Today is good for them, and therefore they talk about against it. Against it. If for them, they don't speak for it. No, they can't be allowed to do that. That's my final point is that now we are going to cha challenge. We are now going to challenge the status of Esiama as a Deputy Speaker of Parliament. All right. Uh, let me and just... also finally challenge the 
standing locus of the MPP calling themselves the majority in parliament. Let me get your, since you're on the floor, uh, I'm sure you heard that on Sunday an unfortunate incident happened where a minor was driving a vehicle, uh, smashed into another uh, car and a, a number of people have died. The police have arrested the parents, uh, the father is a pastor, and I just want to get your preliminary thought on what has transpired so far. But before that, I just want to read just three points from the DVLA uh, uh, website which says that requirement for getting a license or requirement for you to move vehicles. Physical presence of applicant at any DVLA office, minimum age 18 years, basic education, that's the BEC, and a few other requirements they make of it. I mean, this incident has happened. People have lost their lives. The police uh, have taken action. What are your thoughts? Briefly, in like one minute. Unfortunately, there have been so many accidents and deaths in this recent months. Yesterday, you heard what happened in Kaswa. Yes. Avoidable death. Of innocent citizens. Here you are, 16 year old boy. Every parent knows that a 16 year old boy ought not to be allowed to be driving because his sense of judgment, you see, his emotional control are very low compared to a matured person. Sometimes when you go to sit in a v VIP bus, you want to know, look at the, even the, the stature of the driver and his experience and demeanor. So you have a 16 year old boy. Driving, I'm, I'm informed that he was driving from a party. So the chances of being under alcohol or alcoholic influence or other are there. Did the parents see the boy when he took the car out? Those are things the police would find out. The police will, have, will find out. But I am saying that he has caused the death of innocent Ghanaians. And no matter his age, the, the law has... A process of dealing with people of his age. He ought not to be favored because he's the son of what? Whoever. That's what I'm saying. Now, the parents have been rightly called by the police to assist them. Because if the, car, the child stole the car from them, the key and drove, then it's not their responsibility. But if the parents, for example, have sent the boy, then they have liability for the death of those people. Let me get your thoughts, uh, uh, Enoch. Yeah. Before I go to that, please, I would like to um, state again. You have one minute. Yes, I would like to state again, forcefully here, that um, the business of Parliament is, is on. A motion has been moved in Parliament and seeking to interpret Article 97 on the floor of Parliament to seek the, 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 the Speaker's intervention by way of a ruling. And in as much as interpretation of the Constitution is clearly the exclusive domain or jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, the Honorable Afenio Marken has done as good by going to the Supreme Court uh, to as it were, ask the Supreme Court to interpret that provision for us. As citizens, we must stay resolute and wait for the outcome of the interpretation of the Supreme Court. Uh, my learned senior stated that in their constitution, they have clear rules. Do I take it that it. you don't want to comment on the because oh, I'll, I'll, your one I'll minute is running I'll, out? I'll state it. <laughs> we have our own rules. We have our own grievance procedure as a party. So they are NDC. We are NPP. They should allow us because the business of the NPP is a closed book and we have our own rules to manage the affairs of the NPP. We have no members serve notice to us that they have departed us, that they have grudges with us, they are, set, they are severing ties or divorcing their relationship with the new patriotic party. So the NDC can concentrate on Honorable Kwachiaka, a Memphis Central Member of Parliament, and leave the new patriotic party as a party alone. We, have, we can deal with our own issues. On the issue of this accident, I believe that parents have a duty of care towards their children. And if I heard that the age of um, the offending, the, the young offender or the juvenile is 16 years, then it means that he's in conflict with the law and that no circumstances is he allowed to even drive a vehicle. So the, the mere fact that he's 16 years and he was allowed to drive the vehicle out, let us leave that to the police to continue the investigation because matters that uh, involve children or people below the age of 16, uh, uh, 18 years, the, the, the laws preserve it. Let's allow the police to do their own investigations and come out with it. If the, if the, if those, uh, if the child or the offending juvenile is put before the, the juvenile court, we will all follow up and see the outcome of it. But let us also tell other parents who are watching us that they should be mindful that they have a duty of care towards their children and that any liability that is occasioned by their, 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 their words can end, can bring some ramifications or some consequences to them. Michael, so we all should be careful as... As, as a result of these issues. I think it's a sad occurrence and 
it breaks my heart. Um, my condolences to the families that lost their daughters and the school they belong to. You know, it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened, but it has happened. And I think all of us can draw lessons from it. I think we should be very conscious on the road. I mean, there are all kinds of um, arrows flying at daytime and night, all kinds of mad people on the road, all kinds of people driving. You just have to be conscious on the road. Just be extra, extra conscious. You should know, you know, the things that struggle to take, the, the things that are trying to take our lives in this country are enormous. You can just be walking with Umburam, then someone explodes, a stone comes to kill you. You can be, the things, so I believe our life expectancy must be very low now because the kind of world we're living in now, we, we, we have to be extra conscious, mm. pray more and, you know, be very careful out there. I want to end with um, an invitation to our victory walk, which is happening in Kumasi this Saturday. Alan Chamartin does it better. He does it better than any other person. I mean, he introduced health walks. So we are doing the biggest again in Kumasi this Saturday, and we are inviting all of our Fanto faithfuls to come. Let's let's um, walk to victory. Thank you so much, Michael right. Safo Kantanka. Michael Safo my, Kantanka my, my, my is... My word is that let's be careful of the water we drink these days. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Illegal mining, I, I believe, on your mind. But thank you so much, Michael Safo Kantanka, National Communications Team Member of the Movement for Change, uh, representing Alan Kwejo Chairman Teng. Uh, we've also had, you just heard him speak there, uh, Sampi Yale, who is president of the NDC uh, Professional Forum. We've had Enoch Afuakwa, who is private legal practitioner and member of the National Communications Team of the Governing New Patriotic Party. My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you so much for joining us on Big Issues on New Day. And the program continues. Stay with us. <laughs>